So I'm going to call this Finance Committee meeting. Um, I think Madam Vice President called it to my attention who I am and what I'm doing. I thought I was Santa Claus. So let's call it the order. Roll call. Mr. Mays? Present. Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Guerra? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Mr. Griggs? Present. Ms. Worthing? Present. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion. Well, first, any changes or additions to the uh, agenda? If not, I want to entertain a motion to cancel all the agenda except for the action resolutions and, and, and any new business. So other than that, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Guerra, it's been moved. Is there a second? Mr. Yeah. Mr. David? I second. It's been moved and second to postpone all parts of the uh, Finance Committee agenda except for the resolution action items and any other new business. Any discussion? All right, that was the grandkids and all of that stuff, so. That was Santa Claus, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll say in the, any discussion. Okay, my discussion on postponing this is because it's the holiday and I'm in the spirit, I still might vote no. <laughs> all right? All in favor of postponing all of the agenda items except for the resolutions and new business signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. All opposed? Nay. But that's just not in the spirit, I don't mind. Any abstentions? That motion carries. Okay, so I would look at the resolutions. Um, I'll take them as a group. With any separations, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Guerra? Make a motion that we approve, uh, is it proper to say the master resolution? You know. Well, let's name one. them by number. Yeah. One, each I make one. a motion that we approve 180-618-180-626. Hold up, give it a title. Wait, point of order. <clears throat> yes. Shouldn't it be moved to council? <coughs> yeah, that's where I'm moving it to. Yes. I thought I said to approve. No, to move. Oh, To sorry. council. Okay, yeah. we getting it together. All right. So let me restart. Make a motion to move to council. <laughs> One eight zero six one eight, which is uh, Burger Chevrolet's uh, Tahoe's. One eight zero six two zero, which is contract with Northstar. One eight zero six two one, which is a contract with Mott. Uh, One eight zero six two two, which is a contract with Flint Housing. One eight zero six two three, which is a contract with Cornerstone. One eight zero six two four, which is a contract with the Lake Agency. One eight zero six two five, which is a budget amendment for public safety, and one eight zero six two six, which is a budget amendment for general fund police. Okay, is there any add-ons, Steve? Anybody got any add-ons? Come for yeah. After the motion, I don't want him to finish his motion till I check to see if there's any add-ons. What you prefer? No, second. Then do the add-ons. Okay, is there a second for the motion? I've been bossed around. <laughs> uh, I'll second that, Mr. Sh um, Chairman. Okay, it's been moved and properly second that we move those resolutions to council, and that was 180618 um, on our agenda, all the way to 180626. And, uh, I wasn't bossed around. I was politely asked. So is there a, any discussion on the motion, any separations, any add-ons? Mr. Bratz. I believe there were, I believe there were two add-ons. Do we have them? Yes. So, if I could. Ms. Brown. Any add-ons that have will go to the council agenda. Okay. okay. I believe you have four altogether that's being worked on. 
So they will be added uh, when, when you go to the floor. I like to see you here, Miss Galloway. They're not quite ready yet. Okay, they're not quite ready. No. How can so, they not be? So, so can we at least get the gist of them if they're not ready? Go ahead, Mr. Branch. Do you, do you have them, Kelly? Yeah, give us the gist. Well, there are two. Uh, can you speak into the microphone, Ms. Yeah. Attorney it's Kurtz? It's going to be AE, Tom. How much you want? Uh, there's a resolution. Hold up. Let's see what you're doing now. Check, check. All right. <laughs> There's a resolution to approve a one-time payment for additional services under the consulting services agreement between the City of Flint and the Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce. Say that again. Resolution to approve a one-time payment for additional services under the consulting services agreement between the City of Flint and Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce. How much? It's $10, the amount of ten thousand for consulting services of what type? I'm getting my cue, Miss Galloway. Go ahead, ask your question. Yeah, if 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 the chair doesn't mind, through you, um, even though we don't have it, I think it's appropriate for us to discuss it so that by the time we do get it, we understand what we will be approving in an effort to save committee work to be done here and not on council. And so um, I would like to know what that additional 10,000 is for. It says one-time payment, and, and, but what is it for? And Mr. why is it an add-on? Mr. Branch might be able to elaborate somewhat on that. Okay, the additional funding for the um, Chamber of Commerce was to uh, provide services to the City of Flint for grant writing for a J.P. Chase Advancing Cities grant and revisions and, and completion of the contract to the City Economic Development Plan. So we asked the uh, Genesee Chamber to help us with those two items. Mr. President, through you to Mr. Branch, you said to do grant writing? To do a one-time grant application to J.P. Chase Morgan for an Advancing Cities grant. And I just... It, it seems like when we were um, talking about a grant writer for the police department, we were told that the city already had a grant writer on staff or that we were already paying. So I'm one- no, we oh. were saying that we were going to get a grant writer, but this grant came up and we needed to get it in. And we asked the Chamber of Commerce to help us get this grant in. This grant is to be used to help renovate business facades we don't know if we're going to get the grant, but if it does, it'll help us renovate some of these older business uh, exteriors so they'll make them more attractive. And so does $10,000 seem reasonable for a one-time grant application? It's more than a grant application. It was a grant application. Also, uh, we had some content that we wanted to have developed for our city's uh, economic development plan, so the chamber helped provide that for us. So if that came through, wouldn't... Would that not fall under a different grant? I mean, you said to help. No, we are using, utilizing funds from the Kellogg Economic Development Grant to pay for these services through the chamber. So the $10,000 is for that. I just, you know what, I, I can't speak for my colleagues, but it, it, I am remembering that the reason why we could not allocate money for a police grant writer was because we mm -hmm. already had a grant writer that was already being paid and so that money would be a waste of money for something we already had and so um, I, I want to do a referral that we can um, check the records on that Janelle um, where is this ten thousand dollars coming from the Kellogg it's coming out of the Kellogg grant funds okay uh, Mr. Garrett and Mr. Griggs. No, I was just going to ask the question because I had talked to Angela earlier and I assumed it was grant money that was going to the Chamber of Commerce so they could look for more grant money for the city for right. economic development. 
That's just to clarify. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, I mean, and, okay. and and we uh, just to, just to make sure we clarify what we're doing here in lieu of we're still working on hiring a grant writer. What we're saying is we're at, we're outsourcing grant writing capacity, if you will, in order to um, make sure that we get this particular grant. That's what this is about. So. The Kellogg Grant was, it was always the plan for the Kellogg Grant to support grant writing capacity. So this is in line with the plan that we have talked about. It's just the fact that because we still don't have a permanent grant writer yet, that we're utilizing the services of, of, um, of uh, the Chamber of Commerce in order to bring that capability here for this one-time service. Okay, just final thing, Mr. Chair. You're done, Mr. Garrett. Um, Ms. Galloway and Mr. Grigg. Thank you. I just want to say for the record, um, we worked on um, grant proposals before June 30th. And um, I'm just going to say for myself that I'm disappointed that the police department really felt as though they needed a, a grant writer to help them with their needs. And that here we are in December and I'm going to go for myself under the impression that we had a grant writer and here we are <coughs> six months later and we still don't have a grant writer. And so I, I'm just expressing my disappointment and, and I want to thank Mr. Guerra because even the way you guys are explaining it, when I hear a one-time grant that there's some other things in this grant that we're trying to secure and then I hear someone else kind of um, I don't know, in, in the court of law, they probably would say leading the witness. Um, I, I'm just saying I asked a very straightforward question and, 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 it, and it didn't very come across that way. As well. No offense, Steve. I'm just saying for myself. The police department wanted a grant writer that was a full-time position that was $45,000 for a year. And we're getting ready to pay, and I'm not saying that it's not a value, we're getting ready to pay $10,000 for what starts off as a one-time grant application with some other duties. And I look forward to the paperwork so that instead of having this dialogue, I can read before me what it actually says. Mr. Mr. Griggs. Okay, I've got a couple of questions. One is, uh, I'm not real straight if this grant is for renovations or economic development. <coughs> The grant that they're looking for for J.P. Morgan Chase Bank is a grant to help local businesses fix the facades of their building to make them more user-friendly, look better to the community. So we're going to Chase, Chase Bank and asking them for a grant to do that to help our local businesses out. How much was the grant? How much money are we going to request in the grant? I believe it was upwards of a million dollars that's in the grant. Okay, thank you. So 10,000 might, might get a million. Miss, I um, have a clarification, it was three, yeah, it was three million in that Three grant. million, so 10 might get three, might get one, might get 500,000, that's the goal. Miss um, Worthy. I'm confused now. This, isn't, this is economic development, it's not about the police. This is about economic development. Okay. Why did we bring up the police? <laughs> they asked for a but, oh, okay. But this is under the Kellogg Foundation. This is under the Kellogg Foundation so it's grant. So separate funds. Where we had funding in the grant for grant writing capacity. For economic development. For economic development. Right. What, so why don't we have a grant writer for the police? I know maybe, we, where's Huey? We're working on getting a grant well, writer. Well, let's, let's, let's stick with the thing. We'll get okay. to the police after this, you know. <laughs> um, but I, I'm good with it. Yeah, this we'll, we'll a, right after we say settle that this. This we'll is a good thing. Uh, it's not our money. It's Kellogg's, uh, which is good, <laughs> and uh, and and we need it. So. So, Ms. I'm Worthen, do anybody in here know the answer? Ms. Worthen, look for it. Do we have a grant writer in the police department? Do anybody know? Okay. They say we don't have one, Ms. Worthen. So we'll circle back on that issue. Who is it that wanted to say something? Is this Mr. Davis, Councilman Davis? Go ahead. You got the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Steve, I got a question now on the facade. It's to help uh, businesses that's struggling to, to keep up the outside of their okay. business. 
if I'm hearing right. Um, if we could attain that grant, would it be a lot of higher qualification through economic development for the, the business to qualify for the facade help? There will be some qualifications, but until that grant is actually, you know, awarded to the city of Flint, we don't have those details yet. Okay, but there so will be some, some qualifying things. Mainly, they got to be in good standings with the city. If, you know, they can't have any outstanding bills, the normal stuff. But it's not location type, you know. No. It's all over the city. We're going to try to do, very, try to do various corridors in the city, north, mm -hmm. east, south, and west. Very good. Thank you. And I would just say, Mr. Branch, you know, as a council person, I don't make but 19000 a year, and everybody sitting on the side of me make 19000 And we got a couple businessmen up here, so we don't want to vote on nothing that would limit council people from getting a facade redone as well. So we ain't heard nothing that limits um, businessmen in the city who might or might not be a council person getting a facade redid him. Is that a question? I don't think I'm going to vote for it if it's going to limit council people from qualifying for business because we have to have other jobs and own businesses because we the lowest paid, one of the lowest paid in City Hall, so we ain't heard council people can't participate in economic development, have we? We have not heard that. I haven't heard it neither. Okay, any more discussion? Mr. Griggs. I don't know who this question is to, but don't we have an economic development department? Yes, we do have an economic well, development department. Who's, who's de in charge of that? Mr. Miller has been running point. I just seen him walking out the door with a businessman. They getting close to maybe trying to put something together. Mr. Bratch, have I give him any wrong information? Who that, heads up Flint's economic development that department? Is, that is correct. It's uh, Mr. Roderick Miller. Roderick Miller. I thought Mr. Gilchrist was. No, Mr. Gilchrist is a chief advisor and um, he's also getting paid under the economic development grant from the Kellogg Foundation. The same as Mr. Miller. The Kellogg Foundation told the city of Flint to hire people and create capacity to do economic development. The mayor picked Mr. Gilchrist for one of those appointments. Okay. And is there any more questions on the Consulting and the second walk on that I have is well. Let's 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 see if it's any more questions and everybody cleared up. I'm not going to let you chair this meeting because I want to be the city administrator and you won't let me. So, is there any more questions on that first add-on? You're exactly right, Mr. Branch. You're a hundred percent right. Seeing no more questions, go to your second add-on. And the uh, second add-on was uh, for a settlement of the case Charles V. Yanta versus City of Flint. It was a workers' compensation case that I believe we reviewed in a uh, executive session a few weeks back. How much is it for? Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand. Anybody need executive session? We good. We can discuss it now. It's before us. It's out in the open. So this is a settlement, a legal settlement for fifteen thousand. That's the second add-on. Is it a third or fourth add-on? Here comes Miss Wheeler, City Attorney. You see, Attorney Kurtzner, Miss Wheeler is in the room. Attorney Wheeler the chief legal officer for the city of Flint. Um, y'all still, y'all need more time? Well, the city administration only had two add-ons, and I was told that the clerk had two more. Is it two more? Or that's it. So it's just two. It's okay. Two. okay no, we only had two. We only had two. Okay. They're being put on the actual agenda, but we won't have them at the moment. So hold tight. Okay, we got a motion on the floor. It's been moved and properly second. Is there no separations to these um, resolutions? That's the motion is to move them to council. I looked at them last night. Uh, thanks to Ms. Winfrey Carter, emailed me these agendas. The North Star, that's part of the $30 million 
the 20 Tahoes. Um, That's what I was talking Let me see. Is that a captain or, uh, to me, he like a double duty deputy chief, but Captain Bernie, let me ask you a question, if you know. Yes, sir. Now, we, we added these into the budget, if I'm not mistaken, so I'm excited. I'm going to vote for you to get these 20 new Tahoes. I'm looking at the time frame. It'll be somewhere in 2019 when they arrive. Are you and the police department ready for these vehicles? Well, affirmative, and they're not all coming at once. They're going to be spread out over a five-year period. The first year will be delivery of 15, and then from there we'll get 10 a year from the remaining years. And uh, that way, we uh, have concurrence on this through the yards, through uh, the fleet manager. That way we have a staggered system of vehicles so we get a few at a time instead of waiting until we run them all ragged and then trying to buy them all at once. All right. Well, I'm excited if y'all are excited. Um, Mr. Griggs, see that guy just walked in? That's yeah. Mr. Miller. That's the head of the Department of Economic Development for the city of Flint. Ms. Galloway. Yes. Um, I, um, Huey and I were going back and forth through you to um, Mr. Newsom. Okay, thanks, um, Captain Bernie. Mr. Okay. Newsom. Mr. Newsom, you um, responded that we had approved the um, leasing for four tandem trucks. And, but then I, I, um, I asked about these specifically. When right. I, I guess I didn't know that we were leasing. I don't know if I missed it. And so that's why I was trying to ask, when did we specifically discuss this, these? No, the, this, these 20, this is the first time this has come in front of you. So maybe I misunderstood your question, so I'm glad you brought it to the floor. We had, we had um, about four, 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 the leasing of four tandem trucks back in April. So that was you know, obviously a different lease for a different department. This is, this is the first time that we're bringing this before you, the leasing for these vehicles. Now, Councilman Mays alluded to the fact that we did budget for these in the police fleet when we adopted the budget, but now we're actually procuring them through, through, a, through a vehicle, through a lease uh, mechanism. And the reason why I was asking is, it's, it's, and you can forgive me if I'm not remembering something correctly, but it seems like we bought some Suburbans at $35,000 a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so I guess my question is, I'm trying to understand, is the 20 that we're getting now that is not to exceed 260,000, right. is that covering the full term of the lease Just for the first these? Year. 20 vehicles just the first year That's okay mm -hmm. and so it says for a total lease purchase price of one million dollars right so we'll so, be, what we'll do is budget we'll do it year over year over year no question As, but mm -hmm. my question is why wouldn't we if we could purchase the suburbans at thirty five thousand or whatever mm -hmm. the amount that has been negotiated through the state or however we bought the rest of them mm -hmm. if we bought 20 of those cruisers at that 35000 I don't know if they all need to be the same level or anything, that's $700,000. Yeah. And I understand that the police life on a vehicle right. is a it's certain way, but it seems like they have the ability to go through other municipalities that might find them more valuable right, and, yeah. and might mm -hmm. be able to do it. And so I guess my question is, why would we do that instead of leasing well, the vehicles? So, the, so I think... Obviously, it's a cash flow question. You have less cash if you're going to lease a vehicle for that life. And what we're trying to do, one of the strategies Mike and I, Mike Rule and I was uh, director of the fleet um, for all the city, not just for police. One thing we're trying to do is look at a lease versus buy strategy. And one of the reasons we're looking at it is because what we tend to do, as opposed to having a lease and getting some of the salvage value back, leveraging a large organization that can go sell the vehicle after the lease and we get some of that residual value back or we keep the vehicle and you know what usually happens 
We keep it for five years. We can't afford, we can't budget to keep the vehicle, to sell the vehicle and buy a brand new one. So we keep it the sixth year, the seventh year, the eighth year. And then you get into these traps where you've got old, outdated vehicles because you couldn't budget the acquisition, or the full acquisition of a new one. So one thing we're looking at now is a lease strategy as, as opposed to a buy strategy where we take the vehicles, we work with the, lease, the lessor and um, make sure we reap some of that savage value and usually they can sell in the aftermarket better than what we can. Right, so, so where are those contracts? Like I'm a leaser. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I lease because I want bumper to bumper. Mm -hmm. I want to drop my car off to you. Yep. But I also know that in an effort to get that done, you've set some boundaries for me. Right. You said, Monica, you pay for 12,000 miles a year. Mm -hmm. If you go over that at the end of your lease and there's no lease pull ahead, mm -hmm. you better start calculating. So, and so my question, and the reason why I say that is because I'm trying to understand how leasing is beneficial for the police department who sometimes put a lot of miles on their car. And we know that that inventory out there is old. Well, that's, that's the, you just, your last sentence is primarily the problem. And I'm, and your, most of your lessors are not going to give you a typical 12,000 mile full maintenance type of a, of a, of a contract with police vehicles because of the wear and tear and the, the high usage of those vehicles. I'm happy to share some of the terms of the lease. I don't know if they're in your package or not, but I'm happy to share some of the outlines or the terms of the lease um, that we have, that we have for this particular lease if, if you would want to get that. Well, I'm glad I looked at this because mm -hmm. I would have never thought that we were paying this for some 2006 and 2010 models. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if the, I'm just saying, well, and I'm gonna just read to you what it says. Go ahead. Maybe yeah, because I'm, these is 2000, these new It vehicles. says the yeah. fleet department is requesting a purchase order with Michigan deal vendor Burger Chevrolet to replace 20 patrol vehicles. Right. 12 2006 models. Yes. And yes. eight 2010 models. Okay. So those are All with high mileage and in poor condition. So, so going back to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's going back to my original point. We have bought vehicles and for, you know, different leadership is saying, well, we, let's stretch these vehicles out. Those are vehicles that are being replaced. Okay. I don't have it in front of me, but that, those are the vehicles that are being replaced. And oh, that they just, are. Okay. That just show, That just that just accentuates my point. Okay. That the temptate if you if you have a lease program and you're managing the, your vehicle fleet versus letting the vehicles just sit there and <laughs> finance directors come and, and say Mr. we're Newsom, not going to you don't you, know, that you sort of thing. I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. What I want to see is the terms of the lease. Okay. I want to see, and the reason why is because as you're educating yourself, mm -hmm. you're educating me. This may not be the first time that vehicles come before me, mm -hmm. but if you take me along on your learning journey, I, mm -hmm. I will be able to better prepare to not ask these questions and to understand what our police officers need when they're looking whether to lease or to buy. Understood. So all I'm asking is that you would bring me along in that. Mr. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. I, I, I strongly Gare. agree with that. Okay. I'm happy to do so. Mr. Gare. Yeah, I just want to say that definitely some of those cruisers out there, they do need to be replaced. Uh, and if you ever rode a police cruiser when they got to go, and the, the, especially on the roads that we have here, it is not light. Uh, my question was, uh, not necessarily, um, I guess it kind of relates. Where are we on the progress with the, uh, the cruisers that we accepted from, was it Texas? I don't know, Captain, if you can help me with that. We accepted some Ford, some Ford cruisers that you were You're talking donated. about the 40? It was a while back ago. Yeah, this was probably about 10, 12 months ago. <clears throat> we, uh, yeah, just, I think what you're talking about. There were really, some Crown Victorias, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah no, about a 12, about a year ago, we um, accepted a grant to potentially bring in 40 new cruisers, right? Yeah. From Texas. And I, um, my understanding is that that has fallen through. I, unfortunately, dep uh, uh, Deputy Chief is not here tonight. He couldn't be here tonight. I don't know. Mr. I'm glad it fell through. I didn't want to see no crown because I'm a <laughs> GM man. I like Chevrolets and Buicks and Pontiacs. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Captain Byrne. My understanding on that whole Texas deal is it may or may not still be pending. Usually if it sounds too good to be true, it is with me. 
we've gotten to the point where most of our cruisers are reaching 200,000 miles and some of them in my opinion are becoming unsafe so that's why we decided to pull the trigger with this leasing program and instead of continue to wait for the miracle 40. You know who is the who hold our money tight look at him right there we so keep us posted on them police needs yeah. well if we, we if we get those 40 then all the better but we we can't wait we're getting right down to zero hour with the cruisers we're putting on the road daily don't hesitate to come to this committee mr gear I and mean, captain if you could tell us what is the average retirement mileage for most cruisers uh, the cause, most because i know we're way above that i assume we are <laughs> the the police departments tend to retire them way prior to a hundred thousand it's rare to see a police department because of liability go over a hundred thousand we're, we're getting up there near two hundred thousand with most of ours now we have a select few the black and color cruisers if you see them i don't know if we have five or six of those those are our newer models and uh, i don't know why they're separate from the other ones but our last large batch they're all right up there and uh, they need to be replaced badly. And so to answer your question, I couldn't tell you the specifics of this, the Mystery Texas 40 uh -huh. cruisers, but I think we just got to the point where we're done holding our breath because it's getting to be a safety concern. Without a doubt, thank you. Okay, hopefully I'm fitting the call for the vote on the motion. You see I'm trying to speed it up. Any further discussion? If hearing none, this is a motion to move these resolutions to council. And that's all the resolutions on this agenda, which starts at 180618 and goes all the way to page 4. 180626, Mr. Garrett, and read the motion into the record. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight resolutions. That's what I count. Y'all ready to vote? All in favor to send these to council, signify by saying aye and or raise your hand. Aye. aye. All opposed? I would count that vote as seven to zero to move all of those resolutions to council. Those two add-ons, uh, Mr. Branch, can y'all approach and give copies to our staff and secretaries of those two Adam? Davina have them. Okay, have so let's call them add on number one and add on number two. I'd like to entertain a motion. Mr. Branch, can you come holler at me right quick? Let me see what you got. So I can here come Davino. You got them. No, she, she got them. Okay. Let's call add on number one. Add on number one would be the Charles, let's see, the consulting agreement. I'm going to go with this consulting agreement as add on number one. We discussed the consulting agreement, but if you want that to be number two, number two so this number one. Yeah. Let's go with that one first. Okay, look, she passing out what we gonna call add on number one, a resolution to approve the settlement of Charles Yanta versus City of Flint workers' compensation. Now the other add on, we gonna designate it as add on number two. Add on number two would be a resolution to approve a one-time payment for additional services under the consulting services agreement between the City of Flint and Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to entertain a motion to move add on number one and add on number two to council. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would like to... Um make a motion that we move add on number one and add on number two to council. It's been moved and properly second. I mean, no, it's been moved. Is there a second, Mr. Davis? Mr. Chair, I second. So it's been moved and properly second to add, the, the move add on number one, a resolution to approve the Charles 
Yanta v. City of Flint Workers' Compensation, case number, I guess that's W1500323 to counsel, and it's also been moved and properly second to move um, add-on number two, a resolution to approve a one-time payment for additional services under the consulting services agreement between the City of Flint and Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce. Is there any discussion or further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of moving add on number one and number two to council signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion would carry seven to zero. Now, any new business? No, we postponed the discussion items. We did not postpone new business. I always like to give an opportunity. All our meetings is open to the public. Any public got any new business we need to hear about? If not, we done met the rules of the open meeting. Keep on thinking if you got something and you want to tell us before we adjourn. I'm going to say this under new business while the public think, and if they decide they want to have nerve and talk to this council, you can come to the mic. But let me say this. Under new business, y'all been getting them letters from the Attorney General's office regarding the subpoenas and witnesses, anybody who didn't get those communications. If you got those communications, where Ms. Wheeler go? Ms. Wheeler, I'm asking your office to, can you approach, I'm asking your office to file a motion to enforce those subpoenas. We issued subpoenas to Amy Epke three, four times, all kind of different ways because of what they was talking about, Judge Ewell signing them, the city attorney signing them, so they didn't had them signed all kind of ways, and hopefully they telling us they won't show up. We issued one to Rich Baird. Rich Baird used to live in City Hall, and Mr. Winfrey asked me about Rich Baird as it relates to the $750,000 that we are about now, Mr. Newsom, as it relates to the 30-year deal and how that money could be used. And then the third subpoena went to Governor Rick Snyder himself. I wanted to get Rick Governor Snyder served before the first of the year, and he sent, they saying through the Attorney General's office that they don't think state employees can be subpoenaed. So we gonna find out through the circuit court. Uh, Ms. Wheeler, do your office have a problem filing the necessary paperwork and motions to um, see if we can enforce any or all of those subpoenas? No, we don't have a problem doing that. And in addition, I, I think this, like I said, they keep reiterating uh, through attorney Nate Gamble that their employees are not city employees. That is not a requirement under the, or, the uh, charter to be a city employee. It's about the work that's before this, before this council and one of the committees. So we can work on that. Now there was an indication from Mr. Gamble that he had reached out to say he wanted to schedule a meeting to discuss their presence uh, with you and him on the phone. Now uh, I, I know that you and I had talked about it, but like I said, as far as what he's saying in there and, and reaching out to to me to to have a conversation, like I said, I don't I don't know to what extent he's doing that other than making a paper trail for the state. But I'd be glad to schedule uh, a meeting and reach out to Mr. Gamble if you would like to do that on behalf of the council so that we can discuss their presence and any any anything else so we we can do that um per one of the the uh, requests or discussions in one of the letters that was sent by uh assistant attorney general nathan gamble let me say this to the city council you guys know if you don't know i'm a stickler for not more than two council people so if mr what's his name gamble yes. if that um attorney 
for the Attorney General's office want to facilitate a conversation, as he kind of indicates, um, with me and Ms. Wheeler, because he indicated to me that if council people call to talk to him based upon the letters that they get, we recommend against that. He don't want to talk unless we go through our attorney. In this case, it would be our city attorney, Ms. Wheeler's office. I have had no problem working with the city attorney. So if any council person, if Mr. Winfrey ain't available, if a second council person want to be in on these discussions, I can take one at any time. Usually I'll deal with Ms. Brown, the city attorney, and another council member. Just so you know, this ain't a closed thing. But I'm telling Mr. Um, attorney General, Amy Epke and all of them, we work as a group based upon law. It have to be a group, five of us. So if you want to talk to us, come talk to us in public. I've seen Governor Snyder go all the way to Washington. I've seen Governor Snyder and them hold press conferences in these very chambers, but now they don't want to come talk to us about $559 million flowing from Lansing to Flint. And what's important, Mr. Newsom, from what I read in the newspaper, you got $4 million that seem like we deserve for reimbursement. They in the newspaper, if it, the newspaper is accurate, saying we'll give you a million, but three million we gonna hold hostage until you agree to use a hydro vac. Two separate issues. So I don't wanna lead this committee to buy into that nonsense. If you owe us for reimbursement and it's three million, don't put it contingent upon what we do in phase six with a hydro vac, release that three million. So I wanna ask Amy Epke, and I said to Ms. Brown, Ms. Wheeler, they keep talking about we'll answer questions in writing. Well, we can't swear no writing question in, and we can't um, cross-examine a writing question, or whether you call it cross-examination, one answer leads to another, and our time is valuable. Send somebody down here. So if I said to Ms. Brown, we might preference a letter to this guy, Angela, Ms. Brown will talk to you. It might say, in light of your letters and your refusal to follow the subpoena of some sort, we send in a letter to Amy Epke or the MDQ, give us a list of everybody who making these decisions. Because to me, if I'm reading the newspaper, right, and you tell me, Mr. Newsom, I'm not gonna sit here for the, and represent the city and let people hold $3 million hostage for one. You say it's $5 million now. Last I read, it was $3 million talking about use of HydroVac. Come talk to Councilman Mays in this Finance Committee. And so that's what we gonna do. We gonna subpoena to the cows come home. Now hopefully, when the first of the year hit, maybe the new Attorney General won't have the same position. But we'll see. So we'll continue this investigative hearing. And so under new business, if there's no questions about the investigative hearing or any other new business, Mr. Griggs, I've got a question for Ms. Wheeler. Ms. Wheeler? <clears throat> Are you saying that the city officially disagrees with the Attorney General's position? Many times on many different issues do we disagree with the Attorney General. I, I can't hear you. What? Yes, on many different issues we disagree with the Attorney General's office. Okay. All right, thank you. Hopefully, so Ms. B Ms. Wheeler, as soon as y'all get a motion date to try to see if we can enforce these subpoenas, let all the council people know I might sit in and over there. You might have to put Mr. Gare on the oath or something. We don't know where, who, why this is gonna go, but we appreciate you moving forward and I want to reiterate that we do, um, we think we done played patty cake with them enough Let's see if we can enforce these subpoenas. 
and then we will know as a council whether we can subpoena state elected officials and or staff. We should be able to call staff in. And once we find out that answer, Mr. Guerra, I'm going to try to get the appropriation chair of the House and the Senate here. Any more discussion finance committee meeting? If there's no discussion on finance committee meeting, do I look like Santa Claus? If I do or don't, I'm going to still wish y'all a Merry Christmas before I adjourn this last finance committee meeting of the winter of uh, 2018. So get ready to buckle down and let's do good financial work in 2019. Public, is y'all happy? Y'all need to talk anything about finances before I shut down. Good evening, Mr. President. I'm a finance chair. Good evening. Okay, finance chair, you, you stated uh, the new business on economics. You no, know, last week, I, we the people stated that uh, that the Vatican could ought to get ready because Nansen refused to give Flint any more money. And, I'm, and you notice they already either already got started with, the, with my taking up one of the words out of the prayer talked about leaders not into temptation. But now it's to President Trump. He got three days to do what he said he's going to do with the economic situation, but we are my foundation. We asking him not to build a wall, send the peoples over to Mr. Mike, because we ain't got no problem with money. Because Mr. Mike, you saw for yourself, one of the professors in here refused to ask for help. So that's the new economic business to you, financial president. Well, thank you. If there's nobody else in our open meetings on the Open Meetings Act have anything to say, I would then entertain a motion to adjourn Mr. Um, Mitchell. See that man sitting there, Mr. Miller, that's our new economic development director in the city of Flint, Mr. Griggs, you seem, and Ms. Worthen, finally, the question on the grant writer for the police department, you got the answer? It looked like Captain Bernie said we don't. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would want to know why. Okay, you want to make a referral? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, I would order somebody from the police department to come to the next finance committee meeting um, to discuss it unless Mr. Branch wants to do that I, now. I just, just want to make a clarification. The grant writer that we're seeking will not only be for the police department, it will be for overall for the city of Flint. So they will handle grants for police, fire, or anybody else that wants to write a grant. Police is important, so Ms. Word, then I would order that we put the discussion requested by, can I put your name on it? I'll put Ms. Worthen's name on it. I want it as a special order in the next finance committee meeting, a discussion about grants and money for the police department. It's about time to circle back on that because policing is a high priority when you dial 911. And, I, and we better try to fix that. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the Finance Committee meeting. So moved. Mr. Griggs has moved to adjourn the Finance Committee meeting. It's been seconded by Mr. Guerra. And so all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, that meeting is adjourned seven to zero. So then we would go now into what committee? Do I have to sit up there? It would be legis. It would be who? Legislative, wouldn't it? You can, can I come. Just do it from here. You can take this seat if you like, because I'm taking mine. No, I guess I'm going. It feels here. good to set up here. I like setting up here. I want this seat. Okay, I'll call a legislative uh, committee meeting. Not yet. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to call the legislative committee meeting to order. I'd like to entertain a motion to postpone everything except for the ordinances. 
Mr. Guerra? I'll make that motion. Uh, there's a motion to postpone. Oh, and sorry, we need to add that um, new business remain. Can we modify that? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so there's a motion I'll to <laughs> uh, postpone everything but the ordinances and uh, new business. And it's seconded by Mr. Griggs. Any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Man, this is Mike is. This is I'm on. This mic is as sensitive as Michael Jackson then was. But um, this is what I want to get at. The first of the year, Ms. Worthen, you see how you got that special order about medical marijuana ordinances? Mm -hmm. I would ask that we start discussing the recreational marijuana. And so when the first of the year come in legislative, I want to start getting a feel of where this council is on recreational marijuana. It's going to take them a long time to put them ordinance, I mean them regulations in the play, but I want to start discussing that and I want the community and the council to know what it means whether we opt out or stay in. And so I want to start that discussion and so I would ask that some way or another we weave that in. Actually, I. I don't know if I put that. Did I just send an email recently about this? I don't remember ever putting this. Okay, that's why. Can we change it then to recreational? Uh, because that's what we really need to get into right now. So yeah, we'll just change the special order to recreational uh, after the Christ Christmas break. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, uh, Ms. Galloway? Um, I hope that my colleagues will go on to the Michigan Municipal League. They did a, um, I can't remember what it was, um, the webinar today on recreational marijuana. And it was um, a very detailed one hour webinar that tried to share the difference between medical marijuana and recreational marijuana, but some of the challenges that come along with m m the recreational. Um, and, I, and I hope that my colleagues will take the time to look at that because there are some stipulations and or, if you will, protection for a community more so under medicinal that is not there for recreational. And so I would just implore my colleagues to one, take this very serious, um, and two, as, as much as you have your you know, views of however you see it, I'm hoping that we look at the implications that this will have on this community in its current state, um, recognizing the difficulty with the fact that it is still not legal on the federal level and you still can be arrested even by the state police or enforced on the, the federal level. And so again, that was, um, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what the name of it was, but it was this morning and it was, Oh, um, I'm so sorry, you guys. I just took a bunch of uh, screenshots because there were so many things. And also to the community, um, I'm going to see if you have it because it, it says even in here that um, in city and villages, if city and village councils do not act to opt out, citizens may petition um, to initiate ordinances to provide a number of those marijuana establishments. And so I just hope that the community is not silenced. We represent your voice. And so we just need to hear from you. Thank you. Thank Madam you. Chair. Mr. Mason. <laughs> that voice is going to stick you <laughs> up. I know it. I'm going to say this because I can tell when colleagues, I don't know until people vote if they're going to vote yes or no, but I'm going to put it on the record. <coughs> Councilman Mays ain't voting to opt out. The people voted for recreational marijuana. 
And the other week we was here, I don't know who it was, somebody stood up at that mic talking about the charter saying the people voted for the charter change and it was in an August primary and they, wrote, they read off the numbers of each ward. So when people vote, it means something to me. If the people in the state of Michigan voted for recreational, if the people of Genesee County voted for recreational, and if I look and the people of the city of Flint voted for recreational, Councilman Mays ain't gonna nullify their vote, Patrick. And now I'm gonna tell you, for a politician, that's a hot issue. Because even before they voted yes for recreational, people were scared to say they were gonna vote. Guess what I said? I'm voting yes. Now that don't make me the bad Santa Claus. Do I look like the bad Santa Claus, Pastor Gill, because I got dark glasses and a Santa Claus hat? Well, this is the position I take. And I take that position because when I hear the Attorney General say they are gonna look at letting people out of jail. Now, do you know that's enough discriminalization for me? It's bad enough people smoking weed and can't get jobs, but to get a felony? I ain't down with that. I already got felonies. I don't want no more. Now check this out. The position is this. So it's going to be a lot of different positions going back and forth. And what I'm hearing, if five out of nine council people in the city of Flint vote to opt out, that still means folks can smoke on private property, I'm hearing. They can still move around with 2.5 ounces of weed and they can have 10 ounces at home. The only thing that might restrict us to do if we opt out, it might restrict us from setting up where they can buy it from. So they'll go over to Clio and other places and still come back into Flint. So I think the train and left the station. And when train and left the station in California, Colorado, Michigan and whatever, you got 30 states with medical marijuana and 10 with recreational and then up north you got a whole country a whole country Canada is legal so I think the train and left the station it reminds me of prohibition with alcohol and you know I don't want to talk about that Patrick so my position is this I want to pray I want to go to heaven People cannot smoke cigarettes. People cannot drink alcohol. But marijuana, the train, and it been left the station in the 60s and 70s. So it's 2018. I look forward to this conversation with city council as it relates to the city of Flint. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Actually, I was going to say that I don't know if it's um, planning or legal. Uh, if we can just have what the city's choices are as ordinances on this, uh, because there are concerns, children are involved, all of those things, and I know there are laws for smoking, I think that's more on a state level. But if we have choices, I'd like to know that in the special order, what, we, uh, what our choices will be as far as uh, regulating if we did opt or did not opt out. <laughs> I guess. Um, all right. Any other discussion? Uh, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. I did see where you had recreational farther down as a discussion item. Okay. And then on the special order was the medical. So however y'all play no, with that. No, the special order should be recreational. We should do that. So we'll keep that that way. All right. All in favor of postponing everything except for the uh, two ordinances and new business, uh, signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Uh, aye. aye. Any nays? Okay, so that leads us to ordinance 180523, amendment uh, ordinance chapter 2, article 6, citywide advisory council. Any discussion? Okay. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes. Make Mr. a motion that we postpone one eight zero five two three. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> any? 
<laughs> There's a motion to postpone. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. And seconded by Mr. Griggs. Any to meeting? when? Next, Next uh, committee meeting. We still have a question needing to be answered. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of postponing uh, Ordinance 180523, signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. aye. Any nays? Okay, so that passes. Uh, 180, Madam Chair. Mr. Guerra. Make a motion that we send 180628 to Council, which is Amendment to Ordinance Chapter 46 and Utilities. Okay, there's a motion. Um, Mr. Davis. Madam Chair, I second. And it's been seconded. Any uh, discussion on 180628? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Through you to Mr. Benzik, what is this? Ain't that a good question? Mm -hmm. What is this? What is this? See, I don't get up here and talk all proper. And what is this? What is this? Your mic on. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yes. through you. Uh, so, Councilman Mays, um, a cross connection is defined as a. Um, let me see here, I want to say this correctly. Is a connection or arrangement of piping or appurtenances through which backflow of non-potable water could flow into the public drinking water system. Um, a very simple explanation of that is if we had a depressurization of the system and a garden hose uh, was connected and it was in a, let's say a bucket of chemicals, it could suck that back into the water system. Um, another example is uh, all fire suppression systems have to have a uh, backflow prevention device. So this is really the uh, program that administers this. And the reason why we're bringing this to you is um, it was cited uh, as a deficiency from the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, we have rectified the deficiency, but part of what they wanted us to do is to update our uh, cross-connection ordinance. I get it. So this is going to help mess and stuff from backing up into the water supply. Yes, sir. Sewage. Okay, thanks. Well, not, not sewage. But not sewage? No. Uh, so, so if you can imagine uh, like a fire suppression system, uh, the water sits in those pipes for a long time. We wouldn't want that water to end up in our drinking water system. So that's why you have a backflow preventer that isolates that system from our distribution system. So, so it addresses, it says, um, water supply and sewage disposal system. I believe that that's referring to the ordinance that it's under. Okay. It's, it's under the, the water and sewer uh, ordinances of the city of Flint. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor of... This is to move it to council. Uh, moving 180628 to council, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Any nays? Okay. Uh, new business, Rob, don't move. <laughs> Can you come back, please? Because I do, I have some. For the, thank you. Uh, for the, um, it, I guess there's a review panel or a review board for contracts, is that correct? Like, or, like uh, when you look over contracts, there's a group of people that rate it and vote on it? So there's not, it, I guess it depends on what the, I think you're referring to when we bid something out? Is that what you're getting at? Or? No, like when we accept bids from different companies, how we decide like what your recommendation to council will be. So it's, it's dependent on there's not always a, a, a board, if you will, um, or a group that, a panel that selects them. Um, it's kind of dependent on what the, the bid is and what the, the service is. So sometimes we will do a um, award based solely on price. Other times it's, it's based on proposal and price. Sometimes it's just based on proposal. Like when we do MDOT work, we're not allowed under the MDOT uh, purchasing requirements. We can't look at the price. We can only evaluate the proposal, then after we make the selection, then we can open only <laughs> the, the one bid that's associated with that company. Okay. So there's multiple different ways that we evaluate uh, purchasing. 
So for AECOM, was there a review panel or board? There, there was a review panel. Okay, who was on that? There were five people on that. There were um, myself, um, Derek Jones, uh, Loist Fletcher, um, his name's Ira and I can't think of his last name. He, he used to be, I think, the president of the school board. I'm Rutherford. not sure what his last name. Say again. Rutherford, Rutherford says. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, Clarence, um, he's the president, I think, of Hamilton Healthcare. I'm, I'm sorry. Not, his I, name's I, Clarence. Clarence, who was P the last one? Pierce. 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 Yep. Do you have, like, the rating system or the scores they gave for the companies um, other than AECOM? So when you guys d decided to... Uh, choose AECOM and bring it before council. Do you have the ratings <coughs> that each person gave them or how you decided? I, I don't have them. I, those were turned into purchasing. Okay. So at the time it was Derek Jones. I assume that those records are still in existence here somewhere. Okay. Then what, point of information. Yes. What are you looking for? The ratings uh, for the companies uh, that besides AECOM. So AECOM and all the other companies that they were looking at uh, for their recommendation for council, they chose AECOM. I wanted to know what their ratings are, like how they made that decision. So um, I'm gonna make a referral then uh, to purchasing for that uh, information, if we can um, put that down, Janelle. I know I have the five that made that decision, but any records? Uh, on how they made the decision, um, I'd like to see those, please. All right, thank you. Any other new business? Uh, Ms. Worth. Yes, Mr. Mace. Now you know if Rob Benzik and purchasing don't give you that information, we in the middle of a hearing on the, some of that stuff and you can get it, so let me know whether or not you received that, because I'm trying to get y'all to really pay attention to this investigative hearing on all of those parameters. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benzik. All right, if there's no other new business. Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. I would move to adjourn legislative committee. There's uh, been a motion to adjourn, Mr. Griggs. I'll second. And it's been properly seconded. Okay, all in favor of adjournment say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay, and so now we are moving on to uh, governmental, governmental ops. Legislative is now adjourned. So we got governmental ops, grants committee, they should go fast, and then regular council meeting, and then I'm off to the mayor's Christmas party. 501 Grill, Raspberries. Get right, ready, like Patrick. I'd like to call this governmental ops uh, meeting it's order. It's going to be fast. I'd like to entertain a motion uh, to suspend or just do resolutions and new business. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, you remind me of a president. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mace. Yeah, I would like to move that we um, deal with the action items, the resolutions, and new business, and postpone the all the other agenda. In the executive order, I forgot that. Huh? There's an executive order, too. Oh, an executive session? I don't want that. Confidential memorandum. No, I don't want that. Okay. All right. We'll okay, that. so my motion stands. Because that's the confidential one on the mirror. Uh, yeah, my motion stand. I won't get in discussion. My motion stand. Okay. Just for, to be clear, just doing resolutions and new, di new business. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I second. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. President, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor. I'm finna make you the youngest president in the history of the city of Flint. I keep saying Mr. President. Let me say this, Mr. Chairman. That closed executive session on the mayoral appointees, I think we know what that is. That can wait 
till afterwards. I think Miss Fields wanted it more than most, and she ain't here, so we can come back and circle back on that. So I'll be supporting the motion to do the resolutions and new business. Any other discussion? No, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Nays? Abstentions? The ayes have it. On to the first resolution. Mr. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Ms. Worthy. Um, I make a motion that we move 180-5980, yeah, 180-590 and 180-591 to legislative committee. There's been a motion, is there a second? I'll second. It's been properly seconded, any discussion? <laughs> Yeah, Mr. President. I mean, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mason. I'm going to make you president before it's over. Um, the anti-bullying policy and the harassment and discrimination policy in the workplace, is that what threw you to Ms. Worthy and them the two that you moved? Yes. And you moving them to council for approval? No, legislative since their policies. Oh, you want to move to legislative yes. committee? Yes. I can support that. I wasn't ready to move them to council, but since they policy and you are the legislative chair, um, I can support moving them to um, your committee. I can go for that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Really, that's, I mean, he really, oh, sorry. Me. Ms. <laughs> Worthing. <laughs> um, really just... Uh, basically described it but since their policies well first of all I would have postponed them anyways <laughs> um, but or asked to be postponed but since their policies I'd like to have a really healthy discussion on this um, later in legislative that's all thank you mrs. Winfrey Carter oh, okay. I just wanted to know the reason as to why she wanted to move it to legislative but I got it. Any other we, can, we can certainly discuss that. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. I know they think this anti-bullying policy and harassment and discrimination policy going to get me the bad Santa Claus, but I think I'm the one that's being bullied on the council. Don't y'all think I'd be bullied? I'm going to start crying in a minute. But So I'm ready to work on it and talk about it. I don't think it's going to get me, Pat. I don't think I'm going to fall down under the bullying and that type of policy. But we'll see. Who knows? Maybe I'm better than I thought I was. I'm ready to vote. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Uh, now we're on to a resolution. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mays. If I can do this, this is approval of the disposition of acquired land bank properties. Where is that policy? Is that policy attached? Yeah. Okay, it is attached. Have y'all looked at that policy yet, council people? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give y'all time to look at that policy that's attached. Me and um, I know Mr. Guerra looked at it. I know Mr. Winfrey had a copy, but this is the policy. For 10, 15 or more years, we have never kept the property going to the land bank. So I want the public to know last year we looked at properties all across the city. We kept seven properties. This year we looked at properties and we kept eight properties. We have 15 properties now. And some of them I want to go back to the people who was in them and lost them. It's like a second chance program. Pat, I'm picking on you because I know you. I, I'm getting old. I can't see anybody back there. I see Mr. King. But we've taken properties, and according to state law, we can take all of them, any of them. And so we met with the Genesee County Treasurer's Office, who foreclosed for delinquent taxes. We met with the land bank, and so we're doing a pilot program. And so now, if this works out, these are the policies and rules. I want council to look at them over the holidays. And then when we come back in January, if we adopt these policies, then we will start transferring this property back to folks. The vacant property, I want to team up with some of the kids from Job Corps and Youth Bill, and we'll go in and paint, and then we might give it to them or somebody else in the city. But we want to give property to folks 
um, as a government entity. I've talked with the mayor. And so look like we've got some buy-in on this. So I'm going to say one thing to council, if I may, Mr. Guerra, uh, before I make this motion. When you look at these um, policy issues of right of first refusal, that's the ling legal language that we go in. Ms. Um, Kurtzner, have you ever heard Attorney Kurtzner of the right of first refusal? Yes, I have, Councilman. So I'm studying the right of first refusal. Council people study the right of first refusal, then look at A, B, C, D, um, E, F, and G. I'm going to tell you all off the top one of the ones I don't like. I don't like this one, Pat. If we transfer the property to them, they need to have a current water bill. I want their water on, but if they behind like me, I'm not going to stop them from getting that property because we're going to catch it up. We're going to catch it up. We're going to catch it up. I ain't even got a current consumer's bill. They sent me a shut off. I got to pay 3.30 before Christmas and catch it up. We get paid Thursday. What I get? $580? I might make arrangements. It's Christmas. My son them in town. I might want to pay $102.30 after Christmas. So I'll be calling consumers. But on this, look at that angle when they say um, current water bill. We might have to play with some of these. So in, in light of that, and in fairness to all of the colleagues, we've worked on this. We're getting close. Hopefully, after the first of the year, we can transfer nine properties and have six left. Those are the occupied. Um, so I would move that we postpone, we postpone 180627 the City of Flint policy for disposition of acquired land bank properties until the next governmental operations committee meeting. There's been a motion. Is there a second? But it was there. Mr. Davis? Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Adsir. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mays. Home Street. Not the one where my girlfriend, but the other home street. <laughs> we got, I'm transparent and open. I kept one that had a May's name. I abstained. I didn't vote on that one. But home street that I ain't, couldn't, wasn't connected with, West Hobson. There's two of them on West Hobson. This is the first ward. Because the first ward, me and my block clubs, we talk about preserving our neighborhood. And then we got Bell Tree. But then Leslie Court, um, then we jump out to your ward, is 1113 11, West Hamilton on the corner of Hamilton and Lawndale. And then we got two in your ward, that 906, which was rich, but that 500 one, five something east, was a mistake. So if you get a chance to look at that five, Hundred address, Mr. Garrett. Tell me, is it occupied empty? Because it got on the list, but I know how that mistake happened. And so, the prize is a big one, a nice one on Woolcott over by El Dorado Drive, Pat. If I was the six ward councilman, I'd leave my little house on Russell and be dead over there living large on Woolcott. That's his a prize. And so we can look at residential and commercial. I want council to catch up. Let's get ready to move these properties in a legal way. And um, I will be supporting postponing this in, to January. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, I do have a question uh, for either Ms. Wilcox or Steve. Um, would this affect also the uh, Second Chance Church? This, step of, this, this policy, if it goes into effect? I'm, I believe this. I believe this will set up for residential properties. Okay. So yeah, right. Mr. Chairman, when we bring the resolution for the six, seven, eight, or nine houses in that resolution, I'm gonna ask that the old Jefferson School Second Chance Church that be transferred also to the church and or Derek Aldridge. We've had that one now for two years. I'm ready to clean our inventory out, Pat and start picking some more for next year. So I'm asking that the 
when we move on this resolution for the eight, nine houses, I'm asking that Jefferson School, the Second Chance Church, be in there as well. Okay. Yep. Are well, you in favor of that, Mr. Gear? I am. I am. Good. But we can make that motion next year. All right. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Abstention, no's. Abstentions. Uh, on to, so everybody voted yes. Uh, on to new business. Any new business? Hearing no new business, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. President, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mays. I'm going to make you president. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I would say you got a very important um, committee, governmental operations. You um, I don't know if you are as um, I, I know you active because I see you everywhere in Lansing, at the Sheriff's Department, everywhere, but you show sure speak quieter than I do. So you got one of the most important committees. I look forward to working with you on governmental ops in the upcoming year, and I would move to adjourn governmental ops. There's for been a motion, Mr. Griggs. Second that motion. Uh, all in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We got grants committee and then council and we out of here. Oh, we got ad hoc committee. Well, I think we get, we post uh, well, we'll see what we do. We doing all the committees and council meetings in one day. Okay, I would like to bring the grants committee to order. First, I would like to um, entertain a motion to postpone the rest of the agenda items. We do not have any um, resolutions. All we have is old, outstanding discussion items. Um, you had Mr. Griggs. Can I get that motion? So moved. Mr. Griggs. Um, can I get a second to the motion? Ms. Worthen. Okay, so it has been moved and properly second that we postpone all old, outstanding discussion items. Um, um, what did you say? It has been moved <laughs> and property, property oh, second. Okay. Any discussion? Well, I would say this, um, Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Madam Chair, all our committees is important. Grants, we taking in millions of dollars. Ms. Wilcox, that's the council person I talk to on a regular day more than any of them. I'm finance. She grants. Keep her posted. I talk to her and you, and I'm sure we'll do grants very well in 2019. I'll be supporting the motion to postpone reluctantly. I might just vote no to postpone. They got five votes. I might vote no because I hate to break up a good meeting. Okay, we'll see. Okay. All in favor of postponing all um, old outstanding discussion items, signify by saying aye or raise aye. your hand. All opposed? No. <laughs> Any abstentions? So we have um, what? Five one. Okay. Next. Do we have any new business? Um, Ms. Wilcox, do you have any new business that you would like to share for the Grants Committee? I was thinking about, is there a meeting tonight as far as... Um, Microphone. Hello. Our action plan process has begun for the 2019-20 um, uh, fiscal year. And so tonight there actually is a town hall meeting that um, occurred from 4.30 to 6.30. That was publicized. I shared the timeline with you before. There's a few other meetings and I'll make sure that council is aware of it. There's uh, a meeting on January 9th um, 
regarding it's an application workshop so to provide opportunities for the public who are interested in applying for CDBG funds uh, or home or ESG to come and hear more specifics about the application process that is January 9th and then there's a public needs hearing which I cannot recall right now the date um, but it's on the timeline that I provided to you before and that um, I just wanted to let everybody know that that process has started share with your constituents organ constituent organizations that applications are being accepted for five areas and I'd encourage agencies um, I'd encourage you all to get the word out and agencies to apply thank you madam Ms. chair Yes, Councilman. Through Williams. you to Ms. Wilcox. Wilcox. Ms. Wilcox, how are we doing on leftover monies as it relates to 10000 for Hasselbrink Senior Center and Brennan Senior Center? I believe we're close to finalizing a number, and you should see a resolution for reprogram funds um, in the first of next year. So understanding what you said, we can look for a possible resolution the first part of next year for the 10,000 allocation for Hassel, Brink, and Brennan. Correct. Thank you. May I add one more thing? Yes. I, I only want to add something because I should have requested this earlier, but I know that you moved the resolutions for the three um, the three choice related resolutions to council. I did want to say that we do have um, our partners from those organizations here tonight. And so if there, there is, I know you didn't have discussion on these resolutions, but if there is going to be questions or discussions, um, they're here and have been here and are still here um, available to answer those questions. Okay. Madam when Chair. we get to um, council meeting, we'll, we'll bring them up if they would like to speak. Yes, okay, uh, thank you. Ms. Powers. Yes. Yeah, Madam Powers. Chair, that's what I was going right. to say, what you said. Hopefully he'll stay and we can meet him and hear from him. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Wilcox. Mm -hmm. Any other new business? Okay. I would like to entertain a motion to... Mm. Yes. It's okay. Uh, I make a motion that we adjourn grants. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. I second that motion. Okay. It has been moved and properly second that we adjourn um, the grants committee. All in favor? Aye. Signify by saying aye. <laughs> All opposed? Nay. <laughs> and any abstentions? Okay. Grants committee is adjourned. Mm -hmm.